Welcome to Fairfax Media's first social media workshop. My name is Ethan Winowski and today I will be guiding you through this workshop. We will address what social media is and how it is being used in the media industry, issues of social media in the industry and whether the media industry should increase the use of social media to improve productivity. First of all, what is social media? Social media is the use of technology to share information, opinions, videos and pictures to anyone anywhere around the globe. This tool is changing the way we communicate to others and is used by individuals, groups and businesses around the world, with statistics saying that 29% of all people on earth use social media. There are six social media platforms and these are web-based social networks, location-based social networks, blogs, microblogs, media sharing and listening tools for social media monitoring. However, in the media industry they aren't all used. An example of this is Men's Health magazine. They use Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for social media and these only cover three of the platforms, web-based social networks, microblogs and media sharing. How is it being used in the media industry? Social media is currently used in the media in many ways. It is used to share information, pictures and videos about the business for marketing purposes such as sales. An example of how it is used is posting a photo about new ventures coming to the business or information about sales or news that the business wants others to see. As you can see, the platforms utilised by the media industry are narrow and can be broadened to attract a larger and more diverse market. As with nearly everything, all positive things have their negatives. While social media allows easy communication to anyone around the world online, it opens up a range of potential issues that could occur with the click of a button. There are issues that businesses such as Fairfax Media need to be aware of because if they aren't aware of these issues occurring, they could land themselves in trouble which could go to the extent of court. These issues include discrimination, harassment, defamation, intellectual property and privacy. First of the five issues stated is discrimination. Discrimination is unequal treatment causing opportunity to deny by factors such as age, religion, culture, disability, ethnicity, race and sex. An example of this in the workplace is someone being denied the opportunity of promotion based on ethnicity. A real life example of this is the Clark v Nationwide News case when Natalie Clark appealed against Nationwide News for racial comments on a status about the deaths of her three sons. And this went under section 18C which is defined as offensive behaviour because of race, colour or national or ethnic origin. She won the case and was paid $15,600 in damages. Harassment is defined as repeated conduct that is unwanted by the recipient and the recipient views it as annoying. Harassment through social media is often referred to as cyberbullying and this is taking action to harm others over technology networks. This can be demonstrated on social media by people making remarks or jokes about a person's situation or circumstances. This is quite a major problem on social media with statistics saying that 40% of people have been victims of cyberbullying with 18% of them 40% saying they experienced it severely. Defamation over social media is making a false or critical statement. This is done over social media by people posting comments about a person that is false. In mid-2015, Fairfax had to pay $200,000 to Joe Hockey for defaming him. The Age, owned by Fairfax Media, publicly posted tweets which said, Treasurer for sale. While this isn't good for our company, some of the biggest companies in the world, such as Google, have also been in trouble when it comes to defamation. Intellectual property is creations of the mind that are made yours with patent or trademark. An example of this is the S. Victor Whitmill vs Warner Brothers Entertainment case, where tattoo artist Victor Whitmill claimed that Warner Brothers Entertainment used a tattoo of his in their movie. The tattoo, most famously known as the one on Mike Tyson, was used in the movie Hangover Part 2. Whitmill filed a lawsuit against Warner Brothers Entertainment as copyright infringement. He didn't win the case as it was claimed as fair use. However, to avoid a longer case trial, Warner Brothers Entertainment and Whitmill made an agreement on undisclosed terms. While nothing amounted to the case, Whitmill had a fair point and it goes to show the risk of using things that are claimed as intellectual property. The last issue to be defined, privacy, is freedom from damaging publicity public scrutiny, secret surveillance or unauthorised disclosure of one's personal data and information from government, corporations and, or individuals. An example of this on social media is photos of someone being posted that weren't allowed by the person and could damage her reputation. 
Twitter, one of the biggest social media services in the world, have admitted that they have scanned and imported their users' phone contacts onto their website database so they can learn about their users. Most of Twitter's users were unaware of this and didn't know it was created for this way. This shows that privacy is overseen by many people, but once people realise that their privacy has been exploited, they are quick to argue and expect changes. Another issue with privacy is staff posting comments about the company on a supposedly private page, mainly negative comments. While the page may be private, if the company finds out about the comment, they can go through to see it whether it's private or not. This isn't harsh because staff shouldn't be posting negative comments about the company they work for anyway. After looking at these issues, it can be said that there are three main concerns for media companies such as Fairfax Media, and these are defamation. Defamation isn't just a small issue. It is one that can cause a lot in financial costs and reputation damage for a company. However, if people are aware, defamation will less likely occur. To avoid defamation in Fairfax Media, more people need to look out for and be aware of public comments and need to avoid the use of false accusations. In order to achieve this, staff need to be trained on appropriate comments and ensuring the use of facts and all articles need to be passed through a department trained to check for defamation. Privacy. On social media, a person's privacy can be exploited easier than ever before because social media allows people to post statuses and videos to anyone with the click of a button. In many cases, however, individuals and companies aren't clear or know their privacy settings or if anyone is using their information. Consequences could be loss of job and denial of opportunity for promotion. For these things to not be a problem at Fairfax, policies and procedures need to be put in place so Fairfax media aren't exposed to privacy breaches and put in a tough situation. They also need to be explained to staff so they know and understand Fairfax's policy on social media. Harassment. Businesses such as Fairfax Media can experience harassment and cyberbullying in a few ways. Firstly, people can post negative comments towards the business that can break your reputation or spark others to argue. This is something you can't comment to disrespectfully as it will spark more outrage and could get the business in trouble. It can either be dealt with by blocking the person responding responsibly or deleting the comment. If the accusations are false, businesses should keep a record of what happened just in case they need to prove it or it keeps going. These statistics aren't positive and to make sure this is prevented as much as possible, negative comments need to be acted on as fast as possible and if this doesn't work, install applications such as Defining Social, which give updates and clean negative comments found in social media. There are both positives and negatives to increasing the use of social media for a company. The positives are that it gets the business more recognition and acknowledgement from society. It also helps businesses such as Fairfax share information and news quicker through the use of social media instead of non-technological ways. The increase also means that Fairfax could easily get feedback from society and can hear what people have to say and think. The negatives of the increase of social media use is that it's Issues such as the five stated earlier, defamation, discrimination, intellectual property, harassment and privacy are more likely to occur and it means that if something is posted from the company's site that is negative or not right, their reputation as a company could be damaged. So should Fairfax Media increase their use of social media to improve productivity? While the issues stated have a real negative impact on the decision to increase social media use, Fairfax should increase their social media use. It will increase the productivity in the business as they can hear feedback from the public that can benefit them. They can also share their information over a larger public, update people and business vendors easier, and research competitors easier than without it. Although there are negatives to this, the positives outweigh these and strategies can be put in place to rid the negatives. The use of social media impacts the productivity of social media in a positive way and should be something they look into as a business improvement opportunity.